Streaming now on the ABC Listen app. This is Narelle Graham. Narelle Graham on ABC Radio South Australia and Broken Hill. Yeah, 22 minutes past four. Some of your text messages uh, I will be sharing. They're on uh, throwing things at people, either as a show of love, often it would seem not, uh, big effort being made in the Great Victoria Desert in South Australia to get rid of buffle grass. It's an invasive weed and it pushes out native vegetation. It does not provide habitat for native animals and it increases fire risk. So new staff have been brought in to the Alanjara Willarara Landscape Board to get rid of it. Brett Backhouse is an ecologist with the Landscape Board. Brett, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nero. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm really curious, how does buffle grass behave in a fire? Yeah, buffle grass is, uh, it, it likes fire, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a rapid colonising species, so it'll get into areas that have been disturbed, uh, which is a bit of a catch-22 situation. So you have a fire come through, which obviously disturbs an area. If there's a bit of buffle, it'll get into that area and then it'll keep uh, keep enjoying the fire and keep spreading into new areas. Uh, it burns really quite hot as well compared to a lot of native species. So if you're ever uh, burning buffle grass, it, it releases a tremendous amount of heat, which tends to affect a lot of trees as, long as, as well as other native plant species and kills them. And then it gives the buffalo more area to move into with its seed spread. Mm. Uh, the seed's really fire tolerant as well. Uh, and it'll just keep doing that. And the other thing is the buffalo grass has got really, really strong um, kind of a rhizome underneath the surface. So a really hot fire goes through. It has to burn really hot for a very long time to actually kill that, uh, which a lot of fires in grasslands don't. They keep moving. Uh, and then the buffalo grass that has been burnt, it just removes all of the dead growth basically and then it comes back and you've got more buffalo so it uh it sort of turns into this vicious cycle where yeah. it just continually moves through areas nasty it's indestructible if we got rid of it and that's the aim here is to at least reduce it get rid of it what impact would that likely have on fire risk in a particular area would a fire therefore become much more manageable yeah, it will. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of the areas that the buffalo grass is growing is very dry. Uh, it tends to tends to be in a lot of northern Australian regions, northern South Australian regions, so the APY lands and a lot of the arid lands in that north. Uh, it will get replaced with a native grass. A lot of native grasses obviously do. It does burn. It's, um, you know, this is Australia. We're a, a bit of a fire nation, uh, but it doesn't burn as intense uh, and it tends to sort of rip through it um, and it, it, yeah, it's not, the risk is just not there compared to what the buffalo grass can provide. Yeah, so uh, definitely well worth trying to get rid of it. Brett Backhouse is my guest, ecologist with the Alanjara Willarara Landscape Board and we're talking about buffalo grass in the Great Victoria Desert. What is the hope? Get rid of it entirely in that area? That would be the hope for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very difficult weed. A lot of grasses are hard to control at the best of times. You know, we probably said it. notice that in your own backyard. If you've got a, uh, a weed species of a grass coming up, they they tend to uh, self prolificate really, really quickly. Uh, buffalo grass is no exception. They have a tremendous amount of seed. Um, you know, each head can sort of contain sort of 80 to 120 sort of seeds on each head and adult plants can have a couple of hundred heads per plant. So you've got a lot of seed on that plant uh, and it spreads a, it spreads quite easily in wind or in socks or in vehicles as well. That's another problem. It gets stuck up in vehicles as cars go through it uh, and then it can move into new areas and colonise. So keeping on top of it is really what you need to do just to keep pushing it back and keeping keeping that down, keeping the biomass down to reduce your fire risk, but then also stopping that seed set so it doesn't get into new areas, which is really part of the problem. Well, um, I can tell that you don't burn it to get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? Is it poison? It is at the moment. That's yep. correct. We've got a, a bit of a, they call it the triple whammy mix, which is a, a, a glyphosate, a flupropanate and a pine oil, which is an interesting mix, which is... Um, the, the, the idea is the glyphosate's designed to, to kill the plant that's actually growing at the time. Uh, the flupropanate is a product that goes into the soil, so that's designed to, uh, to kill any germinations of seeds that have come off the plant uh, or to stop those rhizomes if they haven't, uh, haven't you know, been killed by the glyphosate and it's a long-lasting residual. Mm. And then the pine oil, which is an organic 
um, compound is actually designed to be sprayed onto the plant. It actually penetrates the seeds and it'll kill the seeds on the heads. But if there's any that are in the ground or on top of the plant, it'll kill that as well, which is, uh, yeah, pretty handy using that. Mm. Um, we do burn a little bit. If we've got small patches, it is it is sort of a, a bit of a technique. You can burn in small patches in the right sort of climate conditions, obviously not on a hot, crazy day, but you can burn it off and it reduces that biomass and then the plant will come back from those rhizomes, as I mentioned before, and it's nice and green and it's nice and lush and it's at a good time to be sprayed. Uh, and then you can sort of hit it with a spray and that knocks it down. And it can reduce, obviously, a lot of the seed that was around as well. The seed is, is relatively tolerant to fire, uh, so you won't get rid of all of it, but it does reduce it down to manageable, mm. more manageable levels. <laughs> Well, at least, you know, poisoning, you can get rid of a bit of it. I'm, my uh, my husband used to try and get rid of caltrop around the Riverland by pulling it out wherever he saw it and putting it in the bin. Yep. Boy, he was pushing the stuff up a hill, wasn't he? Um, so but <laughs> g- given that buffalo grass is still sown as fodder in some states and then, you you know, you were telling me it can get in the cars and be transported along the road in that way, is getting rid of it like pushing that stuff up a hill, Brett? Uh, yeah, you could uh, you could put it that way. It is very difficult. It's as you mentioned, it is still sort of planted in a lot of more wetter areas for uh, for pastoral growth. In South Australia, it tends to straw off really badly, uh, so it's not really a great um, pastoral product. It, 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 it's it's nutritional value isn't that good. Uh, but you are right. Unfortunately, the rest of the country, you know, there are areas that are still broadcasting it, uh, which is going to make it difficult to stop it back. There's a lot of areas, you know, outside of our state, there's a lot of people really concerned. There's obviously a lot of push uh, in the central sort of region of Australia with a lot of uh, traditional owners who are starting to really push that whole loss of culture. You know, this this grass takes over, it, it floods areas out, it turns into a monoculture, which reduces native animals, uh, not even just bush food, but just all of those type of animals, uh, puts the communities at risk, it ruins cultural sites. Uh, so there's a lot of concern that, and that's in Northern Territory and West Australia as well. There's a lot of communities that are really concerned. So there is a bit of a push going on with that. And South Australia, it is a declared pest uh, weed species, which is good. So we do have that uh, that ability in South Australia to control it, but we need to keep on it. We need to keep talking to people like yourself who are keen to to, to to, to discuss it and to raise it out there so people are aware how yeah. bad it is. Yeah, gee, I don't know. It's, it does sound quite evil, doesn't it? Well, wish you all the best with getting rid of it in the great Victoria desert. You've got uh, two people coming on board, two full-time positions working on this role and uh, plenty of other things that I know that you're getting on with. But if somebody's got buffalo grass on their property, hey, think about trying to get rid of it and helping the rest of us out. Brett Backhouse, thank you. Thank you very much. Ecologist from the Alintyara Willowurra Landscape Board.